Okay, we're going to work this one backwards. Okay, remember when we're doing uh, calculus, if we have the position equation, the derivative of that is the speed. So if we start out with the position, and then take the derivative of it, that gives us the speed equation. Okay. And like most things in math, it works backwards. So if we start with the speed, in order to go back to the position, we do an integral. An abbreviation for derivatives and integrals. That's how we go between the two. So we've got a formula for the speed. The speed of the cannonball is negative 32t plus 180. And we know that the cannonball hits the ground with a speed of negative 240 feet per second. Now before we get to our question, let's see what we can do with that. We know what the speed is, negative 240 feet per second, so we can put that in for our speed up here. So we put in negative 240 in for the speed, and that's going to equal negative 32t plus 180. We can solve this equation for the t, and that will tell us how long it took to hit the ground, because that's when the speed was 240. So subtract the 180 to both sides, so it gives me negative 420 equals negative 32t. And then if we divide both sides by 32, negative 32, we get about 13.1. It's actually 13.125, but we'll just round it off. Okay. Now notice that didn't answer the question. Determine the initial height of the cannon the cannonball was launched from. That didn't give us the uh, answer to that question, but we are going to need this piece in just a moment. So let's shift gears now and let's see the initial height is related to the position. So we're going to need an equation for the position to answer that. Well, we don't have that given. We've got the speed equation. But remember, if we have the speed to get to the position, we have to integrate it. So let's take the integral of the speed. Negative 32t plus 180. And this is the derivative with respect to t. Okay. So how do we do the integral? Well, it's the opposite of the derivative. So we take our negative 32 t, we add 1 to the exponent. Remember, taking the derivative, we subtracted, so the integral, we add it back. And when we do the derivative, we would multiply by this number. So when we do the integral, we're going to divide by this number. Okay, then our next term, we just have a constant term. Well, remember when we do the derivatives, if we had a linear term, it becomes constant. So now if we have a constant term, we change it back to linear. And what that means in this situation is just put the t back on it. Okay. Now, we may have had some other constant out here at the end. Because remember, the derivative of a constant goes away. So since we don't know what could have been there, it could have been any number, we just have to put in a plus c where c could have been that constant. Okay, and if we uh, simplify this, negative 32 over 2, that's negative 16 t squared plus 180t plus c, that gives us our height. And this should look familiar as our falling object formula. There's the h equals negative 16t squared plus 180t plus c. Now, the problem is, we still don't know what c is, which would, that would give us the initial height, what goes right in here. So in order to find that, we've got to plug a number in for t and for h. So what do we know? Well, the only thing we really know is we haven't used this yet. We know that the time is 13.1. So I've got a value for t. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to plug 13.1 in for the t's. Okay. Now, it, it seems like we're just plugging in the only t value we have. 
we could plug in any t value as long as we know what the appropriate h value that goes with it is. Well, this 13.1 seconds we had over here, remember what that was. That was the time it took to hit the ground. So if we want to use that number over here, we have to know the h value that goes along with it. So what would be the height when it hit the ground? Okay, the height when it hits the ground would be 0. Okay, so now if we solve this, we can figure out what our c is. So if we put in negative 16 times 13.1 squared plus 180 times 13.1, All that calculates out to be negative 387.76 plus the C. And then simply to get the C, we move that over to the left-hand side. It goes from being a negative to being a positive. And since C was in the position of our initial height, this also tells us that 387 0.76 feet is our initial height.